In this video, we'll take a look at determining the domain and range of a function. And uh, so for uh, definition, first of all, the domain for a relation is a set of possible or, or permitted numbers in a set of the, in the, set of the uh, independent variable. And the range is a set of numbers for the dependent variable. So domain is the uh, independent variable, often x, but not always. And the range is a set of uh, variables uh, that y is defined for, not always y, but it's often y, um, for the uh, dependent, which is the dependent variable. So I'm going to look at several different kinds of examples. So, so this first one, this is called a mapping diagram. And it's just another way to list ordered pairs. So for example, the ordered pair is 0, negative 6 is a, is a point in this relation, negative 2, 10, 5, negative 6, etc. And uh, I'm going to mostly be talking about functions, uh, but there is a, a couple, are a couple of cases here that they're actually just relations, not actually functions. And I'll mention those as we go along. So first of all, the domain is a set of numbers in the uh, uh, independent set of numbers, independent variables. So the independent uh, variable would be these numbers here. So we would list the uh, negative 2, 0, 5, 7, 11. So those five numbers would be the numbers in the domain. And the dependent variable, which is what they're mapped to, would be the negative 6, 10, 15, 0, and 4. So when you have a mapping diagram, that's that's all you do. Uh, this is the numbers in the domain. These are the numbers in the range. And it's similar for uh, if you have a list of ordered pairs. Now this is a graph that has several different ordered pairs, uh, points. So I'm going to list them as ordered pairs to make the writing the domain easier. So for example, that point there would be negative 5, 3. So negative 5, 3. And then negative 4, 5 would be this point. Uh, this would be negative 2, 1. A uh, negative 1, sorry. Uh, this would be 0, 6. Uh, this goes over 2 and up 8, so that's 2, 8. And then we get 3, 1 and 3, 5. And then uh, 9, negative 3 for that one. So uh, those two points there have the same x value. So if you studied what's a function and what's not a function, uh, this one actually isn't a function, it's just a relation, because we have two ordered pairs with the same x value. But we can still list the domain and the range, even if it's just a relation and not a function. So the domain are the numbers, uh, the x values, or the numbers in the independent variable. So we would list negative 5, negative 4, negative 2, 0, etc. So there's my list for the domain. Now there's two 3's here, so you don't have to list 3 twice. I guess it's not really wrong, but you just don't need to list the 3 a second time. The range would be the 3, 5, negative 1, 6, 8, etc. Those are all unique actually here, so there actually are 8 of those, even though there's only 7 numbers here. So that would be the range, the set of y values for this particular function. And I just used the word function, I should have said relation. Uh, so here's a couple of examples with graphs. And this one, this is uh, the shape of a, a root function. Uh, and I'm going to get into one of those with, the, with an equation in, uh, I should not, the next page of the following one. So, uh, but this is what the whole graph looks like. And so the, because it's, a continuous function along here, and there's not just points, like it doesn't skip from here to here to here, for example, uh, then the domain, we start with uh, x is the entire set of real numbers, but there is a restriction on x because if you look at here, uh, x is negative 7 right there, and then any other point as we go all up on here, x gets larger. So the lowest value x can possibly be is negative 7, so that's why we write this, and this is how you actually read it. x is a member of the set of real numbers, which means it can be any positive or negative number, whole number, decimal, integer, rational number, root, um, any decimal you want to write. Uh, but the restriction, of course, is that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 7, because it never goes to the left of where x is negative 7 here. Now the lowest y value here would be 2. So we write uh, similar for y. Uh, y is greater than or equal, or y is any, can be any real number such that, and that's what that vertical bar means, y is greater than or equal to 2. Because 2 is the lowest y value, but it, y keeps rising as you go to the right here. So that's what it looks like for the domain and range for that function. Now over here we have a circle. And the, it's, it's a continuous function as you go along here, so there's not just discrete points, like uh, one of the examples on the, the, the first page of the note, uh, the first screen. So we start with domain, again, 
it's it's all real numbers but the restriction here is that that's the most left part of the graph where x is x would be negative 2 there and where x is 8 is the rightmost part of the graph so like as you if you start here if you scroll along the circle x changes from negative 2 to a high value of positive 8 here so we would list that as the restriction, all real numbers between negative 2 and positive 8. Inclusive, too, because we've got inequalities here, but there's an equal sign at the bottom. So we read this as x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than or equal to positive 8. So it varies between negative 2 and positive 8 as you go from here to here. Or it doesn't matter if you go along this side, too. It's still varying from a low of negative 2 there to a high of positive 8 over here. Now the range, again, the the range is all real numbers for y, but again, there is a restriction on range because the lowest y value is here, which is negative 1, and the highest y value is there at positive 10. So uh, the y values vary between negative 1 and positive 10. Actually, I called this a circle a moment ago. It's actually not quite a circle. It looks pretty circular. It's actually an ellipse because the distance from here to here is not the same as the distance from here to here. See, from negative 2 to 8 is uh, 10, but from negative 1 to 10 is actually 11. So it's slightly longer vertically, so it actually is an ellipse, which is kind of a circle that's stretched a little bit more in one direction than the other. Uh, questions uh, E and F on the uh, the third page here. So this is a parabola. Uh, I know it's a parabola because it's actually in vertex form here because if we expand this out, x would be squared and y is just y. So the uh, independent variable is squared here. That's how I know it's a parabola. So you might find it easiest to graph the parabola. So the vertex, because it's a vertex form, is at 3, 5. So we can actually plot the vertex. And the a value is negative 2. So uh, I'm going to, well, here, here comes the vertex here. So at 3, 5, that's the vertex. The normal step pattern, if you have no transformations whatsoever, is 1, 3, 5, if you've seen that. And this actually, I'll show you how this works if you haven't seen the step pattern before. The a value is negative 2, which is this value here. So we multiply all these numbers by negative 2. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So the way we use the step pattern is once you have the vertex, the negative 2 here means that you go 1 to the left and 1 to the right and you go 2 down. And that gives you a point on the graph. So there's the 2 down on this side and then here's the 2 down on the left. And then we go down from each of those, we go over 1 to the right and over 1 to the left and go down 6. So for over here, we go over 1 and down 6 and the same on this side, over 1 and down 6 and then the negative 10 as well. So over 1 and this would be down 10 um, and the same here over 1 and down 10 and we can draw our parabola. Um, the only reason I'm drawing the parabola is to give you a visual so you can see better what the domain and range are. Uh, the domain for a parabola that opens up or down is the entire set of real numbers. See it goes on forever to the well down and to the right, uh, down and to the left. So uh, like even if I go way over here somewhere, down there somewhere, there's a point on the graph. It's way down, but it, it exists. And you see also, if you look at the equation, you can the equation says you can you, you subtract 3 from x, square it, multiply by negative 2, and add 5. That's how you get the y value. And you can put any number you want in here, subtract 3, square it, multiply by negative 2, and add 5. There's no restriction to what you can put in place of x there. But there is a restriction for the range. Uh, the range is uh, the entire set of real numbers, but the highest y value is 5 here, and that's what you mostly need the graph here for, because that's where the vertex is. 5 is the highest y value, all the y values are below that, so we would say y is less than or equal to 5. For f here, this is a uh, straight line, it's in y equals mx plus b form. The, uh, the slope would be the negative 3 quarters, and the y-intercept is the 5, that's the b value. So we start by putting uh, a dot right here. And remember, a slope of negative 3 quarters means we go 1, 2, 3 down, and 1, 2, 3, 4 over here, and there's a point in the graph. We go 1, 2, 3 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's another point, and we could do another one again too. And, you know, three or four points, draw your line. Now, 
uh, a line that is neither vertical nor horizontal. So it's not straight across, not straight up and down. The domain and range are the entire set of real numbers for both because it goes forever to the right and down, forever to the left and up in this case. And so there's no restriction on what X or Y could be. Uh, if you look at the graph here too, for example, for X, there's no number you can't multiply by negative three quarters and then add five to. Okay? And you get any number for Y whatsoever. You can put any number you want in place of Y. You can find some X that goes with it. So uh, straight lines, uh, I shouldn't say straight lines, lines, unless they're horizontal or vertical, uh, the domain and range are the entire set of real numbers. Uh, for example, if you had a horizontal line, I'm just going to draw one here. It's going to freehand this, so it's not going to be the greatest. But for example, let's say you had that line. Now it's a horizontal line, so that would actually be the line y equals, what do I go through, uh, 7 on the y-axis. Now the domain would still be this, because it goes on forever to the left, forever to the right. But if it's a horizontal line like this, uh, we, we wouldn't bother with the all real numbers, because the range, every single point in that graph would be have a y value of 7. So the entire range is the number 7. Okay, And if you instead had a, a vertical line, like let's say you had, you know, uh, well, let's go through maybe two here, vertical line like this. These aren't the greatest to draw. Okay, so let's say we did that one. That's the line x equals 2 because it goes through the x-axis at 2. So the, uh, the domain for that would be only the number 2 because every single ordered pair in that line has an x value of 2. The range, however, would be all real numbers because it goes forever up, forever down. Actually, I meant the little e here. R. There we go. So if it's a horizontal or vertical line, that's how it changes. Otherwise, it's all real numbers if it's not horizontal or vertical. Okay, let's go back to my pointer here. Okay, so a couple of exa more examples on this last page here. In, uh, in G here, I have another one of those root functions, uh, but I have the equation this time, not just the graph. F of x equals uh, the root of x plus 4. So now this is the basic root function, um, uh, the root of x. Uh, it looks like a sideways parabola, or half of a sideways parabola. Now, what the plus 4 does here, and you may, may not have gotten into transformations yet. If you haven't, you will later, is it actually moves the graph to the left 4. And so instead of starting at 0, it starts at negative 4. Um, also, if you're thinking of domain, well, what's the, what's the lowest number I could possibly put in there? Negative 4 is, because negative 4 plus 4 is 0. We can take the square root of 0 and get 0, but I can't put a number below negative 4 in. That's why the graph doesn't exist to the left of negative 4. So the domain would be the entire set of real numbers with the restriction that uh, x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 4. Now the range is the entire set of real numbers for y, and the lowest value for the range is 0 here. And then once we go along here, y gets bigger than 0, so y is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, if you didn't have the graph here, you'd have to reason, well, you know, if I put the smallest number in place of x here, uh, it would be negative 4, plus 4 is 0. So we take the square root of 0, and I get 0. So that's the lowest value you could possibly get for, for y. Uh, y or f of x. I could have also put f of x here instead of y. Uh, one last example here. This is actually called a rational function or reciprocal function. And uh, it's a good idea to have a graph here. Now, um, the uh, domain is, again, the entire set of real numbers because this continuous function goes along here. But the restriction, there's a restriction on x, and x can't be 2. And the reason x can't be 2 is because if I put 2 in place of x here, 2 minus 2 is 0, and 0 cubed is 0, so I'd be dividing 1 by 0, and that's undefined. There's actually a vertical asymptote here at 2 okay, that the graph gets close to but never touches. And the range is, uh, again, the y can be any real number, but uh, it's hard to see the scale here, but there's a horizontal asymptote here at 1. And so the restriction is y can't be 1. See, if I put 0 in place of x here, this is undefined. So I can't, actually, I can't make this have a value of 0 
So because I can't make it have a value of 0, 0 plus 1 is the only thing that gives you 1. So that's why you can never get a value of 1 here because I can't, I'm not able to make that have a value of 0. So that's another reason why the, uh, the only function value or y value you can't have would be 1. So that's a little bit about how you uh, find domains and range for functions or, and or relations. And that's the end of this.